Raise your hand if you went to camp and want to say your favorite part of last year. Guys. Oh, James. I wasn't there for long, but the connection with... (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. The connection with God. There you go. Yep. Honestly, yeah. Um, the baptisms. I loved coming back from camp and watching all the students get baptized and then share their testimonies on stage. I thought that was a highlight of the summer. Ooh, Which that's true. Mean? Why don't we baptize in Snail Lake? <laughs> oh, no. Okay, one more. One more student. I'll go. Okay, Nick, go ahead. Oh, my favorite part was uh, probably, like, cabins. Like, um, yeah, like, the people we were with, like, in yeah. our cabins. Like, the relationships and connections that we build. Yeah, yeah. bro. That's good. All right. No cap, best cap, dude. Best oh, cap, dude. Jeffrey, uh, Nick, oh, sir? My fault. Also winning. What? Oh. Not, not, not. <laughs> Boo. Winning nothing. Who was on green team? <laughs> okay. Bro, y'all got lucky I wasn't trying. Pink team was Hey, we know trying. what's up. We know what's up. Um... All right, who knows what the theme of this month or the theme we've been in, who knows what it is? Solve your problems. No, no. Do they know it, Spencer? I forgot. Okay. I have bad memories. Wow. No. Who was here last Wednesday? Raise your hand. Oh, yeah, leaders. What's the theme, guys? Was that your last Wednesday? <laughs> The theme for tonight, for Wednesdays. Oh, I know. Okay, what is it? Basics in Christianity. Wow. Give it up for Nick. Woo. You didn't know that? Oh. Okay, so the theme is the basics of Christianity. Um, who was here last week and could tell me what he said a little bit? Spencer, what the message was? There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, so, with the basics of Christianity, there are what are called essentials. Okay? It means that you need to believe these things in order to be a Christian. Okay? There's a lot of non essentials, right? Like, um, what's a non essential thing, Spencer? Uh, non essential, even though this sounds blasphemous, is you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Or speaking in tongues, like speaking in tongues in order to be saved. But Yeah, so there's some Christians that think there's no speaking in tongues. That's a non-essential. Yeah, bro, it's for real. But that's a non-essential thing. They could still be Christian and be a little misinformed. But there are what are called the essentials. And one of them is the Trinity, okay? Who knows what the Trinity is? Bella? Wait, what are you doing, bro? Sorry. Um, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Okay, and how does that work? How, how, how... Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> this is making me... Right, is, can anyone kind of explain it a little bit? Just give what they know, yeah? Uh, God the Father is obviously our Father. God the Son is obviously our Son. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit is what he fills us with. Okay. I don't know about the Son part, but yeah. Anyone else have an idea? Cody? <laughs> Ain't no way. I don't want to use this. Get this away from me. That is uh, crazy. <laughs> that was Nick, not me. <laughs> so God the Father is um, is obviously God up in heaven. He's mostly, um, or not mostly used, but like primarily from the Old Testament before the Holy Spirit came, uh, came down in Acts. And so the Father, Father up in heaven, Holy Spirit, almost like your conscience inside of you, it's like telling you the right things to do and what not to do and stuff. And then the Son, obviously the one who resurrected, or who came as man, died on the cross and resurrected. Good. Ellen. I learned it like this. I am a mom. I am a daughter. <laughs> And I'm also like an auntie. And God the Father 
God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they're all the same. Different expressions, same God. Three in one. <laughs> so. Valid answer. That's good. That's good. Now, one thing you'll learn about the Trinity is even though that was a great analogy, there's no analogy on earth that will fully encompass the Trinity. Okay, you can have all these, you know, there's things like the water. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but there's a water thing, there's an egg, there's a there's that one. Like there's things that we can huh? Oh yeah, the egg, yeah, the egg. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but there's nothing in creation that can fully give us an idea of all of who God is. So, um, yes. So, God is, there, there's one God, right? But there's three, what we call persons, okay? So, one God in essence, not smells. Cody. Wait, what was that? Wait, sorry, no, no. I have the wrong answer. Sorry, I realized it was wrong after I said it. No, that's good. What? I forgot. <laughs> okay. You, Janai, do you know? Okay. Like, their vibe and, like, their being. Like, who they are. Good. Okay. Come on, Jay. That's literally the definition. It's, na- it's one's nature. It's their being, right? So there's one God in nature, um, and there's three persons that share that same nature, okay? Does anyone know what the nature of God looks like? Like, what what are things that are a part of God's nature? Okay, healing, forgiving, love, miracles. Cody, did you have one? Okay. Forgiveness, yep. So, So God has all these attributes to him. Justice, boom, yes, knowledge, all, power, all of it, all of that, omnipresent, yes, omniscient, there you go, yep, so the three, yep, omnipotent, let's go, all three of the persons, right, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they all share the same nature, right, so the Father is all-knowing, knows everything, the Son is all-knowing, and the Spirit is all-knowing, but they're not the same. They're not the same in like, they're the same uh, entity. Does that make sense? Oh, wait, no, no, they are the same entity, sorry. They're, they're, they're not different in the sense they're fully separate. There's three gods, right? That's not what we believe, okay? So, are there any questions on that? Because that's all we're going to talk about for the Trinity. Nope. Makes sense? It was like a no, it was like a dog saying no. Okay, so what I want to do today is I'm going to challenge you guys, okay? We're going to do an exercise, not a literal exercise, but like a, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to give three um, proofs that Jesus is God, okay? Because as you guys get older, you guys start sharing your faith, you're going to be challenged, right? People are going to be like, when did Jesus say he's God? Where, where does it say the Trinity is in the Bible? All these things, right? And the reality is the Trinity is not in the Bible. Like, this is the Trinity, right? That's not in the Bible. But the, the Bible points to the reality of the Trinity. Does that make sense? And it's the same thing with, divinity, with the divinity of Jesus, meaning him being God, is Jesus doesn't just say verbatim, I am God, right? There's nowhere in Scripture where he's just like, yep, I am God. But... He hints to it, and all of Scripture points to the fact that Jesus is God, okay? So we're going to get into this, three reasons, and pay attention because you guys are going to have to explain this as part of our exercise, at least one of them, okay? Huh? All right. Um, Let's see here. So if you could put up John 8, 56... To 59, it says, your father Abraham, so this is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees, so him and the Pharisees are arguing right now, it says, your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day, he saw it and was glad, so the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham, 
Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. In verse 59, it says, so they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Okay, can you go uh, to 58, please? So Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. Now, this is not Jesus showing his horrible grammar. This is pointing to him referencing something deeper than just him saying, I am. Does anyone know what that is? No, but good try. Does anyone know? Jeffrey, do you know? I forgot you were right there. Um, I think the I am is referring to God. Like, I think he's literally saying, like, before Abraham, I was here, which if he's saying that, he's saying, I was, I'm God. Like, um, I think he was saying, like, he was before Abraham. He was the he was God, and that even after Abraham and during Abraham, he's still God. Yeah. So it's like constant. That's good, Jasmine. Uh, Nicholas. Oh, sorry. Um, it made me just think about like the story of Moses when he's in the burning bush, and when he said, "Who do I say send? Who do I say sent me?" He's like, "Tell him I am." So God was calling himself God. So here. Jesus is pointing to his divinity. Yes, beautiful. You actually just quoted our next scripture. Well, actually, before we go there, um, what's important to understand is that Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees, okay? The Pharisees are these Jewish people who are like religious leaders. They're very knowledgeable of what they would call the Torah, the Old Testament, right? So when Jesus says this... um, In verse 59, it says, so they picked up stones to throw at him because they immediately knew what he was referencing, which is the verse Jasmine was talking about. So if you can go to Exodus 3, 13. All right, someone want to read that? All right, go ahead, Nick. Then Moses said to God, if I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? Next verse. God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he Mm. said, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. Yes. So Jesus (laughs) is claiming to be the God that sent Moses. Now that is a very big claim. And the reason why they wanted to stone him is because that was blasphemous. He was putting himself, he was making himself God. Is your question on topic? Okay. Say it one more time so that the people... How is it blasphemous if it was the truth? So they didn't believe it. So even though Jesus was showing him with his... with his uh, Or showing them with all of his miracles and his teachings and continually making this claim, they just didn't believe. They didn't believe that he was God. Uh, yeah, well, that's just the reality. Um, so boom, there's number one. So if anyone ever asks you, how do you know that Jesus is God... There's one for you. All right, now number two. The one? The I am thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, number two. Um, So this verse is actually used by a lot of people that deny that Jesus is God to say that Jesus isn't God. Okay? So Mark 10, 18. So this is with the rich young ruler. And, oh, yeah, 17. Perfect. Uh, someone want to read that? James? Gracias. Um, and as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Okay. That's deep. So, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Janiah? Wait, We're to show Wait, give her the mic, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you can let her hold it, bro. No, you're good. You can hold it. But um, I was confused because if we're talking about, like, the Trinity and how they're all one, then why is he, like, denouncing that he's good if he's God? Great question. Okay. 
So <laughs> Jesus gets called good teacher, right? In that statement, does Jesus deny that he's good? No. What does he say? Why? He's asking a question. He say, why do you call me good? Because he's saying, he's saying, do you realize what you're saying when you call me good? Because the only one that's good is God. So if we go to uh, John, John 10, 14. Okay, okay. What, what are you still confused on? Everything. Okay. Okay. So how can I give an analogy? So, so, so the, the young ruler comes up to Jesus and is like, he calls him good teacher. Can you go? Uh, can you go back to, gosh, you're so good. Uh, he says, why do you call me good? Is he, is he saying I'm not good? And then he says, no one is good except God alone. Is he saying that he's not good? He's saying only God is good. Now, with that in mind, go back to uh, John 10, 14, please. He says, I am the good shepherd, okay? I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I laid my life down for the sheep. So Jesus calls himself good. And, and who's good? God. So Jesus is calling himself God. Does that kind of make sense? See, a lot of people think because he, he questions the, the, the young ruler that he's saying, whoa, whoa, whoa I'm, not, I'm not good. But he doesn't say that. He says, why do you call me good? Like, do you recognize what you're saying? You know what I'm saying? Because if you look in, if you look in Acts, right, when, um, when they bow down to worship Peter, Peter says, no, 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 get up. Don't worship me. Same thing with John in Revelation. John bows down to the angel. The angel's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't worship me. Right? He stops them. But Jesus just questions it. He questions his thinking. Okay? And another thing in this verse... Actually, no, we'll just stop there. That's good enough. Um, actually, one more thing. If you go read Ezekiel 37, I didn't add the verses because I was, um, there was already a lot. Ezekiel 37 talks about how God, right, in the Old Testament is the good shepherd. So Jesus is calling himself the good shepherd. God in the Old Testament calls himself the good shepherd. Who's the good shepherd? It's God. It's both of them because they're united. They're one. Okay? Any questions? I know that was a lot. Does everyone kind of understand? I'm picking up what you're putting down. Got you. Good. All right. Last one. Now, this one is, is my favorite because what a lot of other religions will do, um, and not even other religions, there's Christians that will say that Jesus, um, yes, is divine, but he's not one with the Father. He's not God. He doesn't shame the, ser- the same essence, okay? So they'll say, right, in the Old Testament, he's called Yahweh or Jehovah, okay? They'll say, Jesus isn't Jehovah, right? They're separate. But this verse shows us that Jesus is Jehovah. He's Yahweh, okay? So if you go to Hebrews 1, 8 through 12, okay, does someone want to read that? Janiah? Your throne, our God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness before, beyond your companions. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like dang, like a, <laughs> like, <laughs> like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years will have no end. Okay, so this is from the book of Hebrews. Can someone guess who the book was written to? No, no, no. Who it was written to? Yes. 
There we go. Perfect. The book of Hebrews was written to the Hebrews. What, why is that important? Because it communicates that the people that were reading this and getting this information knew the Old Testament like the back of their hand, okay? Because that was just the culture. Everyone knew uh, the scriptures, okay? So I want everyone that has a phone to pull it out and go to Psalms 102. You have a question? Wait, wait, what? Ask that one more time. So God is Yahweh. Uh huh. God is Yahweh. Yeah. So when someone asks Jesus who's God and what is His name, why didn't He say Yahweh? He just said I am. Yeah. So um, I'm pretty sure in that verse. Let me just go make sure I know it right. That's a good question, bro. Um, so in that verse they're not asking what's God's name so in the verse uh, you don't have to put it up I'll just read it it says um, the Pharisees they say you are not yet 50 years old and you uh, have you sorry oh my gosh so the Jews said to him you are not yet 50 years old and have you seen Abraham and then that's when Jesus says, truly, truly, I tell you, um, before Abraham what was, I am. So the question wasn't what's God's name, because they all already knew that, because that was just kind of their culture. Um, but if they would have asked that, I'm sure he would have said Yahweh. But that just wasn't the context of that verse. All that right, sense? thank you. Yeah, yeah. So does everyone have Psalm, Psalms 102 out? Yes. Okay, now I want you to go scroll down to verse 12. Everyone's going down to verse 12. Now, Brad, if you could put up verse 8 again. So in this chapter, this is God the Father talking, okay? It says, um, but of the Son. So this is, the, this is God the Father speaking of the Son. It's uh, Hebrews 1 verse 8. Beautiful. Now, I want you guys to look at Psalms 102 on your phone, and then look up here and tell me what you notice. 102, it should be verse 12. Let me make sure I gave you the right verse. That would be awkward. Does everyone see it? Yeah. What's the similar, or what, what, what do you see? Uh, they're like the same. They're like the same? Yeah. Okay. Now, scroll down to verse 25, and then, Brad, can you put up verse 10? What do you guys notice? They're like the same. They're like the same, right? That's so, so the Father, God the Father, is speaking of the Son, referring to this this um this psalms and hold on let me pull it up on my phone too and so if you scroll up to verse 10 or sorry no no 12 scroll up to verse 12 on your phone it says but you O lord now this word lord if you go look in the hebrew is yahweh is jehovah the name given to god that the Hebrews knew, or the Jews, or Israelites, whatever you want to call them, that they knew all the way back then. So what, what, what's happening here that you guys notice? So we have God the Father calling the Son all of these things that in Psalms is attributed to Yahweh. So what do we see? That he's Yahweh. Boom. So now, now I know you guys are probably like, dude, that's a lot of information. I'm not going to remember all this. Well, just ask me and I'll send you my notes and you'll remember forever. 